Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Chris Holt, and welcome back to another video. In today's episode, might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to tell you why I think Ferrari is not at the top of their game right now, and they're heading towards a cliff. Now, I'm hoping that they don't, because I know in the past they've been thriving and definitely up there, but I think they have some improvements that needed to be, get done here soon in order to turn their trajectory around. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, uh, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already because I'm coming out with new content every Sunday and Wednesday for you guys. Trying to get that subscriber count up and trying to bring you guys as much content as you guys can handle, um, as much as I can put out for you guys. Uh, having a job and being a full-time student on top of doing YouTube. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, let's get right into the video. So currently Ferrari has a lineup that consists of anything from a V6 all the way up to a V12 and hybrid powertrains, turbos, all of that. It is really a crazy lineup that has a lot of diversity. But because of that, and not just because of that, I don't think it's as thriving as it could and should be. So the thing that's crazy to me, guys, is how crazy the performance is on a lot of the Ferraris. They're definitely up there with the likes of McLaren and stuff like that. You know, you look at the SF90, that'll compete with the 720S and the 765 LT. No one hears about the SF90. I mean, yes, Shmi just per put in an order for an SF90. Yeah, it's really cool, but the thing that I don't think people realize is he's spending $1 million just about, maybe more, maybe less, depending on spec, on that car with market adjustment today. You get a car like a 765 LT, and that's about half the price. Yes, it doesn't come with a hybrid powertrain, but people are, when you arrive, you're gonna know that, wow, that's a seven, either 720S or 765 LT. That's a pretty crazy car. The uh, SF90 Stradale is a little bit more dumbed down. Yes, it's just as fast, you know, arguably more cool because it's got that hybrid powertrain and stuff like that. But for me, if you set an SF90 next to an F8 Tributo, the cars are going to look very, very similar. And you won't realize that one's, you know, let's say $300,000 and one's a million dollars. You can literally buy three F8 Tributos for the same price as the SF90. Now, if you want to go for a cheaper SF90, definitely go with that F8. But the reason that they're so similar is a reason that I don't think um, they're getting as good as they were in the past. Now, you think about marketing and stuff like that. Yes, there's a few guys on YouTube that do have, like DD has their 488 currently. But I think that's kind of on the back burner right now as they have their SVJ. They have a lot of different other... Um, cars out there. You got Ferrari collector David Lee. Sure, that's what he does. He likes his Ferraris. And then you go with Manny Koshman. I don't even think he has a Ferrari right now. Then you go with another big collection on YouTube, the Triple F collection. I think they have the F40 and they have the La Ferrari. But other than that, a lot of guys on YouTube, on social media, stuff like that, aren't really um, don't really have a ton of Ferraris or are big Ferrari contributors. Yes, Shmi just got his SF90, like I said. That is going to be a really cool car, and hopefully he can do some big things to help spruce that up in the, the community. I know a guy seen through glass. He's got a 360, a back old one, where I think a lot of those cars was when Ferrari was truly hitting it. But I think today their marketing team just isn't quite there. Now, I know one thing that's pretty crazy about Ferrari's lineup is how vast it is. They have things from V6s to V12s to hybrids to turbos to anything just about in between. And there's something really big to be said about that. I mean, Ferrari definitely has a diverse lineup full of anything out there. But with that marketing not really being there, in my opinion, from uh, sources like um, social media and stuff like that, they aren't being able to capitalize on their sales. But with that being said, the amount of true Ferrari loyalists and that are just true to the brand is massive. I mean, I was down in Newport Beach, California this summer with a former 488 Spider owner and he came in and was like, 
all right, I'm willing to buy a Ferrari today. And didn't really fully know. Sure, he said he probably wanted an F8 Spider, but he was looking all over the place from a California T um, at the time to a Portofino. They were kind of sat next to each other. And he even looked at the SF90, didn't realize and didn't quite understand why the car was three times the price of, uh, of an F8. But he looked at both cars and he really liked that F8. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite in his spec, and with the market adjustment and all that, it was, you know, over $300,000 sticker price. So, he decided to wait and order one separately. Now, that's going to come in in a couple months or something like that. But, it's something that's all of these guys that have Ferraris, I feel like, are very true to the brand. And now, I feel like it's not a very youthful company, especially with all the cease and desists and all this that uh, Ferrari's given out supposedly. Uh, I think it will be really interesting to see how they fare in the future as compared to brands like Lamborghini that's very hype friendly, I guess, and you know allow their customers to modify and show off their cars as much as they'd like. Um, it's something else, else to be said is that they've always talked about, ever since I was a kid, doing a Ferrari SUV. Now, if you look at the likes of like the Lamborghini Urus, well, that's doing really good for them because they're able to get production up and be able to sell a more run-of-the-mill car. Now, I know if you, you kind of know Ferrari, you're thinking, oh, that's the California, the Portofino, and the Roma and stuff like that. I mean, I don't disagree, but the whole point is if you want it for your wife or for a family car, there's not really a Ferrari for you. Sure, those cars do kind of have back seats, but it's nothing like a four-door, whether it's a car, anything like that. I mean, you look at some of the older ones, the 612, the 456, those were more family cars, I guess, than what they're making now, um, and higher production number, but it'll be really interesting to see if and when that Ferrari SUV comes out. Now one of the perks of the Lamborghini SUV is that they're owned by Volkswagen, so they're able to run you know, that on the Q, uh, Q8, RS Q8, and really test everything kind of before they get to that Urus stage. But it would be really interesting to see with Stellantis, I believe, owning Ferrari. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments down below, because I think FCA owned them, and then Stellantis bought out FCA. and. Yeah, so I think Stellantis owns them, and they're killing off the Hellcats and and going all electric and stuff like that. So it'll be really interesting to see how the future holds for Ferrari with them killing off some of the top cars. So it'll be super interesting to see how the excitement brand, you know, you're thinking SRT from Dodge, which is Stellantis as well translates into Ferrari, which is kind of their top end, you know, they got Maserati, Ferrari, Fiat, Alfa Romeo, those cars that are kind of more towards the excitement side of, of uh, Stellantis's thing. And I think they even own like Renault and Citroen, which have these really cool hot, hot hatches. So it'll be really interesting to see how that translates into you know, new Ferraris going down the line. Which that brings us to modern day. And in my opinion, I actually think they're doing a really good job modern day. I just don't think they have the media behind it and I don't think they're going as crazy as they could or should be. But I think they're trying the McLaren mentality and just come out with a bunch of new cars like the 296 and now the uh, Daytona SP3 and certain cars like this that they're trying to get out and get out and get out except they don't have the hype behind it that cars like McLaren do. I mean yes they're laying down an SF90 and a 765LT are very similar in speed and performance but at the same time one's a hybrid powertrain that costs about a million dollars and one costs about you know four hundred five hundred thousand dollars. I don't really know the McLaren market or anything like that but I think that's where they're going wrong. They don't have the hype. They aren't going crazy, kind of like the McLarens and Lamborghinis are right now. 
And I think Ferrari is becoming the Aston Martin or Austin Martin of the of the supercar world nowadays. They're making really good GT cars for people that are going into retirement and you know maybe not the kids, not really bringing guys into the brand or anyone into the brand at this point. I think they really need to work on being more exciting and figuring out a way to market their cars and their brand better than, you know, just their F1 team, just, you know, a bunch of clothing and stuff like that, which I do understand that Ferrari in the past has been fully to make cars to fund their race team, which I totally understand and get, but I think they're putting a lot of time and money and effort into the street cars and they're not really getting the returns that I think they could and should be getting. So, if I was Ferrari, what would I do today to help rejuvenate the brand and really get it focused back on track? Now, I would personally take more of, say, the Bugatti method. Now, I'm not saying stuff in quad turbocharged W16s and everything, but what I'm saying is Basically, stop doing what you're doing McLaren style-wise. Don't just keep coming out with new cars all the time. Get a chassis, get a platform, and really focus on it. Okay, get, whether it's the 296, if that's what we're starting with, start with that and make that body sculpted beautifully, this, that, and whatever. Make a really solid GT car. From there, swap in and make all these little special additions and focus on really honing in that 296 if that's what we're doing. Yes, they're kind of doing that on the 812, but they got the 812, the 812 GTS, which is a convertible 812, the Competizione or whatever, and then the Competizione Aperta. So basically, they've made two cars out of the 812. Yes, that's a really solid car, but when you're spending, you know, probably 400 to six hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars on one of those cars it's kind of a a high barrier to entry and one thing i would focus on with the 296 is make the wife's version whether that's just the v6 or you know a little bit more gt style then make a little bit more hardcore version maybe even do something like what mercedes has done with the amg line the amg gt gtc um GTR, GT Pro, GTR Pro, uh, all of this, and then the Black Series, all of that. They've got different iterations for different people and different side, you know, signs like that. You know, the Bugatti now has the new head, and they've got the Chiron, the Chiron Pure Sport, the Super Sport, the 300 Plus, all of these cars. And now I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not, I don't know any of these cars all that well. But I would say Ferrari needs to stop making a ton of models and really try and revitalize and focus on making cool cars and hardcore cars at the same time, but ones that people can actually get into and want to, you know, want to drive and all of this. I think the TDF, the F12 TDF was a solid car and you see those, those cars going up in value after they came out. I mean... They're, they're the same price right now, a TDF, as an SF90. Now, I don't know about you. Yeah, the SF90 is faster and all of this. I would rather have a TDF because it's more hardcore, it's more raw, and it's more driver-focused, in my opinion. Yes, the SF90 is great for the guys with money that want to drive fast. Doesn't mean they get the exhilaration of that. Now, I think that's the problem with McLaren. They're just coming out with a bunch of really fast cars. It's almost like the Nissan GTRs of the world. They have made the car super, super fast, but it takes a bit to get it engaging and really focus down on that almost Lotus-style driving experience. And I think that's what Ferrari needs to do in order to change it up and really increase revenue and sales. Do I think the Ferrari SUV should come and come soon? I do, and I think that will help them out tremendously. Now, does that mean it's based off of the Stelvio from Alfa Romeo? I don't know. It's probably a good start, but I mean, the thing is, is with the 296 coming out with the V6 and the Stelvio already coming out with the V6 literally being a V8 
from Ferrari with two cylinders chopped off. Be really interesting to see how a Ferrari SUV, assuming it's got that V6, is better than the Quadrifoglio version of the Stelvio and how different is it and how they're able to raise the price. Now I know, you know, you look at the Audi RS Q8 and the uh, Lamborghini Urus and they're, you know, very similar cars, but they're actually super, super different. And the thing that I'm really interested to see is when and why that Ferrari SUV has taken so long to come out and when it will actually drop and how well it will do. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, but I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Let me know what you think of Ferrari currently, in the past, and in the future, because I personally think the past, the early 2000s, before the recession hit in 2008, I think that was key prime Ferrari. Now, yes, they're doing you know a good job in F1 and actually sticking with it like a lot of these other car brands aren't doing, which is something definitely to be said. But I definitely think that um, Ferrari going forward, if they stay as they are, will probably have a bumpy future. They need to figure out a way to get new money into Ferraris and get them into the brand. So let me know what you guys think down below. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Because I'm going to be putting out videos every Sunday and Wednesday. Um, at least to the end of the year. Let's see how we can do. Let's get those subscribers up. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys on the next video. See ya.